You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by our co-pastor, Elena Robertson. Welcome back to Changing Lives. We are changing lives with the Word of God, and we are continuing this podcast with God's path of life. And the last podcast, we broke down uh, several things uh, as it relates to Psalms 1, verse 1. And I love Psalms 1, the whole chapter. So I'm going to start out with sharing the scripture uh, and um, and uh, then sharing with you the Amplified. And we're going to get right into the rest of uh, God's path for life. Uh, so in Psalms 1, 1, it says, and this is the New King James Version, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. In the Amplified Version, and this is my favorite version, it says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. And, you know, as I was reading this, I thought about, you know, it, it, it the, the scripture tells us what not to do. And so if we flip that script, then if we read it again and, and, and flip uh, the reverse part of this, it would mean blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man that walks in the counsel of the godly. They follow their advice, their plans, and their purpose, and they stand submissive and active in the path of the righteous walk. And they sit down, relax, and rest with those who are for God, those who respect God, those who who fear God. Wow, when you put it that way, that, that's very powerful, very powerful um, uh, scripture. And so I broke down about the the, the you know the the different per, uh, digressions really of the, the types of people that the Bible tells us that we are not to follow after, and we're living in a day and age where um, you know there's so many things that uh, can influence us, and really you know it's not. To say things is really not the right word because it's really people because people are behind things, behind agendas, behind opinions, behind um, the news, behind um, doctrines and ways of life. People are behind that. That means men, women are uh, within uh, 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 the, the actual conception of ideas and the way that things go and their emotions, their feelings, their intellect. All of these things are governed by man. And it can be a godly man or it can be an ungodly man. It can be a sinner or it can be a righteous person. It can be those who are mockers and scorners or those who are followers of Christ uh, 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 and followers of God, followers of God's way and those who fear God. And so when we look at how this one scripture breaks down, it's three different types of actions. It's three different types of, of, of mode of or course or path. Um, and it's three different types of people, you know, and, um, it's it's so it shows how that there is a, a um, digression from one to the other, and so we talked about um, walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, when you look at the actions, you know, you move along the path, um, and you go from walking as you're moving along the path, and then then when you stand, that means you stop 
in the path. You stop what you're doing. You stop and you begin to set yourself in that place. Um, when you sit, you actually come and, you know, just like I'm sitting now, you know, I'm relaxed, I'm, I'm fixed, you know, and I'm absorbing everything that's going on around me, you know. And so um, so that action is is something how you progress from walking to standing to sitting. And then when you look at the course, the course is counsel, um, the way, uh, the seat. Um, and so these are gradu- graduations of, of evil or ideas or ways of doing things, uh, principles and, and ways of cultivating society and uh, ways of life, conduct of, of character and all these different things, um, you know, and so and then the person where you see that person that's ungodly, that person that that, that doesn't um, uh, uh, serve God, the person that has not surrendered their lives to the Lord, um, that they're stuck in their ways, anything that that is um, of God. They're not necessarily for um, they're um, those who are diabolically opposed to God and his way. And, 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 um, and so those are people who are ungodly. I mean, it's, it's obvious Either you're godly, you're ungodly, you know? And so ungodly person is that person that does not have God in the center of their motives, their, their, uh, uh, their way of life, their path of life. Okay. And then that center so that person progresses to a center, a person that habitually and um, continuously uh, allows their life to be led by their sinful desires, ways, um, and all of that. And then, it, then um, it talks about the scornful. And so, what I want to share with you during this podcast is uh, dealing with the scornful, those who um, have progressed from standing to, uh, from walking to standing. And now that person, uh, you know, would sit in the seat of the school. For there is a seat. That means you come and you, you relax, you recline in it, you, 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 um, you decompress in it, <laughs> all of that, you know? And so, um, and so the word says that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorner. So when I look at that word sit, it means to dwell, um, such as lodging, you know, and when you lodge, you you, you know, you bring all your stuff and, and, and you just get comfortable in that. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, and when you sit, it's for a period of time. And, um, and so when you look at sit, where do you sit? There is a seat. (laughs) A seat is a dwelling place, a a place of habitation, a place where, where you can sit or dwell for a long time period of time. And um, so there is a seat of the scorner and you don't want to find yourself sitting in that seat. Okay. And so when we look at the scorner, this is the boldest level of disrespect of the type of a person that the word of God admonishes to avoid. Okay. Just blatant disrespect regard of the ways of God, okay? And it's all in the Bible where the word of God warns us about scorners. It talks about how scorners are even hard to really, to 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 turn them from their ways. But when you look at that word scorner, uh, uh, oftentimes it's synonymous with scoffer or mocker. And these are people that ridicule or scorn the belief of another. Now, of course, we're talking about we as believers, believers in God, believing uh, in the way of God, God's path of life, okay? And so in Hebrews, the word uh, translated scoffer, or market also means, and this is something that just really hit home with me as far as um, that scoff, scoffer or marker meaning ambassador. So when someone is a scorner, that means that, that 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 their idea is that they are an ambassador against 
um, you know, the the agenda, the uh, the way of life, uh, and uh, opposing ideas. So this is what it says: a scoffer is one who is not only who not only disagrees with an idea, but that person considers themselves an ambassador for the opposing idea. That means they feel like they are the one that needs to oppose. They are the ones that need to stand up against, um, you know, uh, uh, God's way. And, um, you know, uh, and, you know, you hear, you know, different things. Uh, it's old fashioned. It's outdated. It's, you know, different things like that, um, that a scorner will do whatever he can to slander or to um, to lie on, to scheme against um, God's way of living and life, okay? Um, you know, you think about a fool. A fool, you know, may have foolish thoughts, but a scorner goes a step further, and they are the ones that are not only think about, you know, being opposed to the ways of God, but they're going to blatantly and proudfully stand up against it publicly uh, against the ways of God. In Proverbs 22, 10, it says, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So that means if you're dealing with with strife and and you're dealing with contention and just things that are uh, turmoilous and um, just not harmonious um, and just uh, 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 people, you know, just things that seem like it's coming against the will and the way of God. You know, sometimes you, you know, there are people that, you know, have to deal with coworkers that, you know, just really have a hatred for, for you and for no other reason, because, you you name the name of God as your Lord and Savior, you know, and um, some people have a vengeance out. Not that, you know, you've done anything wrong against them, but because they 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 hate God. And so the word of God talks about, you know, Jesus, he came, he he shared with us that that the world hated him. If and if the world hated him, how much more do you think the world's going to hate you? Right. And so we stand for God. We stand for his way. We stand for his will. We stand for his principles. We stand for godly morals. And, um, you know, the scoffer is going to ridicule it. It's going to downgrade it. It's going to make it seem like it's, 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 it's not for the people, all of those things. And so when you look at that scoffer, scoff, the person that scoffs or is a scorner, they 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 have a disagreement, um, and they ridicule all who stand against uh, the ways of God. They actively recruit, and this is something that's crazy. Actively recruit others to join their side, and um, so that's something that is very uh, intentional, um, and. Um, you know, and that's exactly how the enemy works. OK. And but, you know, one of the things that we have to 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 constantly stand our guards is that um, the word tells us in Second Corinthians 10, 5, that we are to to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, his will, his way, his principles, his morals, his way of living, his path of life. And so, so, and so another way of putting it is destroying, you know, you know, speculations, <laughs> um, lofty or high ways that, and so the word says that we are to take every thought captive and every way captive because thoughts are not, it's not just in the head. Thoughts manifest itself into ways, into ideas, into doctrines. So, 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 um, so, so for us, our, our responsibility is to, to, to come against that, to cast those things down. Okay. Um, and so that's, you know, as a part of Psalms 1-1 is we are to avoid those people at all costs. Certainly you shouldn't be <laughs> openly receiving from them uh, through social media, uh, through the news, through other means and things like that, through association. Um, I look at the, the word of God, you know, um, how are we able to cast down thoughts and imaginations? We're able to do that when we recognize 
through the word of God, what is the right thought? What is the right way that you ought to be thinking uh, and govern your life? And of course, we know how do we how do we find how do we know that? We know it from the word of God. You know, um, as you go on uh, in the scripture of uh, Psalms one, it talks about uh, delighting in the law of the Lord. And as you delight in the law of the Lord, the way that you do that is you meditate in it day and night. That That is something that is a part of your life. It's not something that you grudgingly or uh, regretfully or uh, mumbling or murmuring in a murmuring manner, you know, uh, uh, hesitate to do, but it's something that we embrace. When you delight in something, you have great joy in that. When you delight in something, you, you don't have to be told to get into the word. When you delight in something, it's like you yearn for that. You that That's something that you can't wait to get to or to get into. And so, so the word of God tells us, you know, t- as you delight in that, then, um, and it, when you do that, you do it every day and every night. So when you think about day and night, that's 24 seven. H- how can you do that? Well, to me, if the word tells me that that's something that I should be doing, then that means it is possible. And so, um, and so that is something that I strive to do all throughout the day, all throughout the night. And there's times when I'll put on, uh, you know, listen to either the word if I turn over and I wake up and I may not be able to go right back to sleep. I'm not going to sit there with an idle mind and start thinking about all kinds of things and have my mind going on everywhere. But no, I'm going to cause my mind to be fixed on the word of God. So I'll listen to the Bible, whether it's be audio, or I'll listen to a message. And I'd much rather fall asleep on that than to get up, go turn on the TV, and you never know what commercial, what agenda is being pushed, what what evil thing may be, you know, projecting, you know, from 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 agendas that um, may be on that, that TV, you know. And so I'm very intentional about that because there were times when I would, you know, have restless nights and I'll get up and go sit or lay in front of the TV and um, end up falling asleep. And then sometimes you wake up and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, you you wake up to something that's just hideous on TV or something that's just not aligned with the word of God. And so I had to learn how to train myself. Now, first of all, now I don't, you know, as much as I used to, most of the time I don't allow myself to recline in front of the TV and, and go to sleep when I know it's time for bed. Now, there may be times when I, during the day, may take a nap or whatever, and um, <clears throat> I'll have the TV on and I'll fall asleep. But let me tell you something. I already know something like HGTV or something that, you know, I know is the least harm <laughs> uh, if I'm going to fall asleep in front of that TV. But now what I do is I make myself get into bed. If I'm not real tired or if I'm not ready to fall asleep, then I'll read or, um, you know, I'll, uh, I'll meditate on something, uh, you know, or look at a magazine or just something. And then I'll, you know, eventually lay down and I'll go to sleep. And so, um, so we have to be aware of those things that can creep in. Okay. And steal away from us, our opportunity to meditate on the word of God. Um, as we meditate in God's word, it is discourse with ourselves concerning the great things contained in it. And with close application of mind and fixedness, fixedness of thought. Now, when you look at that, what, is, what it's saying is that there are things that we intentionally do, okay? So we have ourselves placed in a, in a place where our minds, we, we, we're intentional about what comes in our ear gates, our eye gates, and and whatever comes in, we want to be able to apply it to our minds. You want peace? You can't be looking at any old thing. You can't be receiving any old thing. You can't allow anybody to speak into your life if you want peace. And so if you want your minds fixed, because the word God talks about, um, you know, uh, that he'll keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. That mind is fixed, which means your thoughts are constantly on God. Okay. And so 
I'm reminded of the other scripture that's in Joshua 1 8, another one of my favorites, where it says this book of the law, which whenever you see law, statute, precepts, um, ways of God, you know, that's relating to God's word. OK, so this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So that lines up right with Psalms 1-1. You want to be prosperous? You want to have good success? Then this is what you got to do. Stop aligning yourselves up with the ways of the world. Stop aligning yourself up with the social media, you know, influencers. You got to align yourself up with the word of God. Now it's different if an influencer is lining themselves up with the word of God, yeah, follow them as they follow Christ. OK, but, you know, if, if you already know, no, you know, they got, you know, they got some good, you know, um, uh, quotes or they have some good suggestions. And uh, but, you know, that there are some ways that are really off, you know, you know, you don't put yourself in a position where you're receiving in that way. And so, um, so, so as we delight in the law of the Lord, this is what we have to do. We must have constant regard to the word of God. That means, you know, the, the sinner, the ungodly person, the, the scoffer, they, they don't have a regard for the word of God. When you have a regard, that means you have that respect for the word of God. You recognize, okay, the word of God ha is, has power. And if I allow it to govern my life, if, if I allow it to lead me, if I allow it to give me counsel, then it's going to lead me in the right path. You understand the value of the word of God. So that means you have regard for the word of God. So uh, it also um, should be our rule of our actions. OK, the word of God. This is when you meditate on it day and night. This is when when uh, you delight in it. This is when you have regard for it. So that means means, okay, if I'm, if I'm learning how or if I'm going to act in a certain way, then I'm going to allow the ways of the Word of God to rule how I act, okay? Um, and so, um, and then uh, uh, you want peace, you want joy, the quickest way I know to get peace and joy, because if the word says that if you keep your mind on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. You, you can't tell me any other place where you can get perfect peace as quick, you know, and as sustaining as keeping your mind on God. And so to me, that is powerful. And then it talks about that night and day. And so we recognize that it is possible if the word talks about it. And when we align all of these things up, then, um, then, then our lives, it, it's more purposeful in the word of God. Okay. And we won't have our, um, you know, uh, our path going astray. We won't fall for any detour. We won't, um, you know, be distracted along the way. We won't allow agendas to pull us off and cause us to, to, to stop uh, the flow that God has given us. Um, and so I just want to encourage you, you know, as I've shared this word with you, a lot of times we've read that scripture and we just, you know, we'll, we'll race through, you know, these different digressions, I say, uh, of, as far as paths of life. And um, I thank God for his word because God's word is for me. <laughs> it's the heart of God. It's the mind of God. It's the plan of God for my life. And I want it to come to pass. And so as you receive this truth uh, from the word of God, I pray that you allow uh, these troops to help you make adjustments. If you've been influenced by um, ways that aren't God's way, if you've been uh, standing or in the way of a sinner, and 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 you recognize, oh, well, you know, they're you know they're not all bad, but then there are ways that 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 you know you. It, you recognize can be of an influence to you, you make those adjustments. Yeah, minister to the sinner. Yeah, pray for the sinner. Yeah, don't, you know, shun people and don't, you know, um, you know, um, put people down. Um, but 
pray for them and pray for God to give you a, a way or interest where you can minister to them or you be that person of influence. So instead of letting them influence you, you see how can God position you in such a way where you influence them, where you are the ambassador for God's way. Amen. I know this word has been a blessing to you. Look, I need you to share this word with your family, with your friends, with those who you know really need to mature in and how they govern their lives according to the word of God. Look, like it if you know if, if it's been a blessing to you and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And so I just encourage you in the word, be blessed as you walk in God's path for your life. This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org and follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.